Hello, it's Ryan Tierney from Lean Made Simple and I'm really excited to announce our next presentation and it's by Lucas Holland from FastCap. Most of you probably know Lucas, he's quite famous in the world of Lean. You know, I've watched nearly all of his videos. So it was such a privilege for Lucas to be able to travel from the US to be with us at the Two Second Lean Summit. You're really going to enjoy this talk. <laughs> All right, well, I'm Lucas Holland, and as you said, I'm here from FastCap. For you, those of you that don't know me, I kind of run day-to-day -day operations along with Colby, uh, Paul Aker's son, now that Paul is busy in Japan teaching all of you guys, and I am uh, running the engineering department as well. And I'm here to talk to you guys about creating a fun culture. I want to start by asking you guys, do you know why you're here? Do you know why you guys do lean? you really thought about why you took the time to come all the way out to Ireland to learn more about doing lean? Raise your hand if any of these you know, relate to you. Maybe you think that you can improve your quality or eliminate waste. No hands yet, no? Make more money? Who does lean to make more money? Okay, leave them up if you put them up. How about uh, the boss or the owner said you need to be here and learn about it? No? Okay, you read two second lean. You thought it sounded cool, good idea. All right, everyone's got a raise for this one. I saw a video of one of the other companies here and I wanted to be more like them. No? Well, there's lots of books on how to do all that stuff. I think you guys have all read the books. And I don't want to talk to you about stuff that you can go home and read in a book. So today, I want to take those books, I want to throw them in the dumpster, and I want to tell you why you should be here. Why you should be here is to make people's lives better. So that when you go home, ah, you can be happy. You can go home happy knowing that all the people that work for you, they went home happy. Who here doesn't want to go home feeling happy and knowing that all their employees went home happy? If you don't, you can leave because I'm not going to teach you anything, so you're free to go. Do you think when you walk into Toyota, who's been to Toyota here? When you first walk in the door, the first thing they tell you is if you come in here and you copy everything we do, you're going to go home, and you're going to fall flat on your face and fail. Because really, it's about the culture they've created. It's not about their processes. Do you think that Mr. Amazawa here, who we heard from last night, would have stayed at Toyota for, was it 30, 40 years, if he didn't enjoy what he did? It's a culture of enjoyment. At FastCap, we have a principle. Toyota's success is the result of the relentless pursuit of building a culture. Well, that's great and everything, but Mr. Amazawa yesterday talked to us about the Georgetown, Kentucky plant. And when he took it over, they had a culture. Everyone has a culture. That's not the kind of culture we want to build, right? So what kind of culture are we actually trying to build? Well, a fun culture, a culture where people enjoy coming to work. So I'm going to define culture for you. Culture is how the atmosphere makes people feel and talk and act. Really, this is a continuous feedback loop. The way people feel determines how they act. They feel great, they act more productive, they think of great ideas, and then they talk happily. They talk to the people around them and motivate the people around them, and they go home and talk to people outside of work and tell them how great their job is. And so our goal is to create an enjoyable, fun, continuous feedback loop of feeling, acting, and talking. That's culture. And the cool thing about culture, but also the scary thing, is that it can never really be stagnant. If culture is not improving, it's always falling apart. Because if people aren't feeling great, they're talking negatively, and they're taking everyone around them and dragging them down. Culture can't be stagnant. It's either going up or it's going down. So how do we build a culture? How do we build a fun, enjoyable culture? Well, I thought long and hard about this. And I could tell you what I think, but the cool thing about culture is it's not really just what I think. It's what everybody thinks, because everybody makes up the culture. So instead of just telling you what I think, I went down on the gemba, on the floor, and I talked to my people. Because in Lucas's famous, or not yet famous words, we're working on it here, <laughs> lean is just the smart guy's way to be lazy and still get it all done. So I went down and I asked all the people at FastCap, what is it about FastCap 
that makes you want to work here? Why do you like us and our culture? And I got lots of answers. I stuck video camera in their face, I recorded them, and I took one big takeaway out of all of them. And I can't share all of them with you today, I don't have time, but we're going to go through as many as we can, and I'm going to try to share with you what makes a fun, enjoyable culture like we have at FastCap. The first guy I talked to is Lyle. Lyle's worked for us for eight years, and I'll tell you a little story about Lyle. When he first started at FastCap, we had some problems with Lyle. Lyle was getting distracted all the time. He was making tons of mistakes. He wasn't engaged. He wasn't really part of our culture. And so we had to sit Lyle down, and we had to say, Lyle, if you want to be part of this culture, if you want to continue to work here, you're going to have to take an entire week off work, unpaid. I want you to go drive down the road and go to every business up the road and go apply for a job and see how you feel when you walk in there and think about whether you want to be part of a cult company with a culture that's going to train you to be better and grow you and do morning meetings with you or if you just want a job where you walk in every day and get a paycheck for doing whatever you want to do. And Lyle came back after that week, a totally different person. Lyle is one of our best improvers now. He's got the most energy, makes the best improvements, and the greatest videos. I bet some of you have seen some of his videos even. He's absolutely amazing. And so for Lyle, he said that his favorite thing about our culture is that there's clear standards. And, as he found out the hard way, if you don't follow those standards, there's consequences. And so he thinks it's really fair. So according to Lyle, in order to build the kind of culture you want, well, First, you got to hold the rope tight. you got to get people who aren't part of your culture out. Usually when we talk about holding the rope tight, we're talking about our standards and our processes. But really, it's the most important with your culture because that one bad seed can ruin the entire thing and send you downwards. I also talked to Alicia. Alicia worked for us for six years, and she actually just got her teaching degree, and she's setting up her own classroom right now and starting with her first class of kids. But she loves our culture so much that when they're on summer break or whatever breaks they get all the time, because we know kids are almost never in school, well, she comes back to FASCAP and she still works during her time off because she just loves being there and being part of the culture. And Alicia agreed a lot with Lyle that she loves the clear standards. She thinks that they make it easy to be successful. She knows what's expected of her to accomplish success. And she actually is inspired by our culture to go home and set up her classroom in a lean way so that her students know what's expected of them to be successful. So both Alicia and Lyle think that you need to make it clear what actions are expected of people in order for them to go home and feel happy, like they accomplished something and they know that it was what they were supposed to do. One way we do this at FastCap is quality checks. When you're trained on a process and you go to build it, the very first one that you do, you bring it back to a leader before you continue. And the leader goes over it in detail and makes sure that that leader trained you properly and that you know what you're doing so that you're set up for success. And when you go build 100 of them or 500 of them, you know that you're doing it right and you can enjoy doing it. You don't build 500 and have someone come back and say, sorry, I trained you wrong. You're going to have to go redo all of those now. Because that doesn't make people go home happy. I also talked to Hector. Hector worked for us for a year and then left and started his own business. And then, because he wanted to keep growing his business, felt like he learned so much from us, he came back and he works for us and runs his own business. And according to Hector, you're only as smart as the people that you spend your time around. And he spends half of his life at work. So he wants to work in a culture full of people who are passionate about improving and passionate about problem solving and who have fun solving problems. Do you need a culture that's not just a culture of continuous improvement, but a culture of people who have fun solving problems and enjoy it and go home happy because of solving problems? At past jobs, the only way we knew how to have fun was to tell dumb jokes to each other. But at FastCap, we have fun solving problems. Just last week, we had this injection mold that was stuck, and we needed to get apart for maintenance. And so we had six, seven, maybe even eight different people from different departments 
different backgrounds, come back and say, I got an idea how to get this part, let's try this. And they'd fail and we'd all laugh and have a great time and the next person would come. That's a culture of having fun solving problems. Another example, the hardest I've ever made Paul Akers laugh, I think. It was 4.30 maybe, maybe five at night. We were kind of the last people there and we were working on this process where we have to put 10 injection molded pieces in a bag. But they sell really well and we needed to get it faster. So he was putting in the time to train me as a leader and to work with me and teach me how do we look at processes and how do we figure out how to get them faster. And as we're trying different things and really we're just counting 10 in a bag, it's not getting faster, we're getting tired, we're getting crazy. He's like, I think this is gonna be the fastest way. Look, I got it, this is it. I look over and I'm like, no, Paul, that's not fast, it's your t rex in it. Like, what do you mean? I'm like, look at your arms, you're building like this. There's no way you're going fast like that. He almost fell over on the floor laughing. I think we quit soon after that and came back to it another day. And now we actually have this awesome little jig that makes it fun. People actually want to do it now. You open the bag, you stick it underneath this thing we built, and it dumps 10 in there for you. It's fun and it's easy. That's what you get from a culture of people who are passionate about problem solving and enjoy doing it. This is Emily. Emily worked for us for four years. And then she moved to Hawaii, because everyone wants to move to Hawaii. But she actually came back to Bellingham. And the minute she got to back to Bellingham, she called up FastCap and she said, I'm back and I gotta work for you guys. I wanna come back. So I asked Emily, why? Why did you wanna come back to FastCap? And Emily said that she loves, that she doesn't feel like she can be automated out of a job because she's paid to use her brain. She can go back, she can be taught a process, she can learn it, she can look at it, figure out a better, faster way to do it, and build something that makes it more enjoyable and more fun. And that's not something that she can be automated out of. So according to Emily, you need to encourage people to use their brains, not use just their hands. An example of that from FastCap is in our injection molding department. This is a mold that makes two different parts, and they get used at different times in the assembly process. They have to get sorted into different bins. A lot of companies, you know, they'd pay someone well to sit back there and spend their day sorting 5,000 parts into two different bins, right? But would that person go home happy? No, they go home frustrated. I spent my day taking plastic parts and sorting them into two different bins. No one wants to do that all day, right? So Peter, he came up with this awesome jig, built it out of cardboard, attached it to the robot that takes the sprue out of the mold, and when the parts eject out, they hit the cardboard and they're split automatically into two different bins. So now Peter, instead of sitting there all day and sorting parts into two different bins, he can use his brain and find other cool improvements like this. And he can go home happy. This is Peter, who we were just talking about, and he's our injection molding lead. He's been here for seven years. And Peter loves that he has the tools and the resources he needs and the time he needs to accomplish improvements. He said at past jobs, he'd often have an idea how to make something better. And even if management said, yeah, sure, sounds like a good idea. If you like to do it, go ahead, do it. He didn't have the tools. He didn't have the time. He didn't have the resources. And he felt like the mythical Sisyphus, who's constantly rolling a boulder up a hill and never getting anywhere. So according to Peter, you need to take the time to invest in training your employees and work with them and give them the tools they need to accomplish the things that they come up with in their brain so that they can be successful and enjoy what they're doing. This is Richard, he's our other injection molding tech, and these are injection molded pieces where we have to clip the little sprue off. And he came up with this idea to use an arbor press. It was much faster and a lot easier on your hands than sitting there and clipping each one by hand. And he wanted to build this jig, but he had no idea how to put it together, how to get stuff to line up, bolt holes to work, how to make a waste trough, anything like that. So we took him back to our CNC machine and even though he's an injection molder, we spent a day and we taught him how to manually program a CNC machine and how to make this jig. And that's how we train lean leaders. He's ready to teach more people how to do things like this. And he went home happy saying, guess what I learned today? I didn't just do injection molding, I learned to run a CNC machine. Darby actually came to us from a Toyota dealership. He's been here four years, and worked his way up to be inventory manager. And on similar lines, Darby loves that we're willing to take the time and the money to invest in teaching him things. He said every day he's excited to come to work because he's curious what new thing 
he might learn that day. At FastCap, Paul likes to call it the University of FastCap. We hire people not for what they know, but for their character. Because if they have the right character, we can train them any skill they might need to know. And when we train them things, they feel great. They act great. And they go home and they talk about it to people around them. And because of that culture, our best employees are the ones that came to us because someone else went home talking about how much they learned. And someone said, I want to work somewhere like that. And they came to FastCap and they said, can I be part of that culture? That is what the feel, act, talk cycle accomplishes. It brings the best people in to you. Now remember this jig I just showed you? Well, this is Brian. And Brian came up to me just a couple weeks ago, and he said, hey, this is great, but we have two different sizes. I have to put one in, slide it in, chop it, put the other in, slide it in, chop it. We have all these pneumatic cylinders everywhere in production that do all sorts of cool stuff, and they're on foot pedals. Couldn't we set this up so that they both get clipped off at the same time, and I don't even have to do the arm motion, I just use a foot pedal? I said, yes, Brian, of course we can. And so I took him back, and I'm teaching him what a solenoid is and how to pick out the right solenoid to run what you're doing and how to wire it into a foot pedal. Once we get that done, he's probably going to learn some machining too, so he can machine a jig to set them all up on. And Brian, Brian in his free time is actually a costume designer. He makes these awesome costumes. And since working at FastCap, he's already brought, I think, three new 3D printers, might be more than that really upped his costume game, got way better at 3D printing. Now he's learning pneumatics and machining. Think about how happy he's going to be when he designs his next costume and he has all these new tools that he can use. So this is Brian. He's only been here a year. He's our production lead. And to Brian, his favorite thing is he has the freedom to fail and not be scared that he's going to be yelled at for failing. So he can go out and he can try things. And he said that when he accomplishes a cool improvement, and then he goes and he teaches someone new, he takes so much pride in remembering how hard it was for him to learn it and seeing how easy it is for the next guy to do it now that he made that improvement. You need to encourage failing. Not just allow it, actually encourage it. Because failing is the only way to learn. The famous proverb, and I always remember my fourth grade chess teacher because he's the first one that ever taught it to me. He said, there's two possible outcomes to a chess game. You can win, in which case you basically wasted your time playing the game, or you can play a chess game where you actually learn something. Some of the most common words I hear out of Paul's mouth are, I don't think that's going to work. But you know what? If you're convinced it is, I want you to go, I want you to try it anyway. I'm willing to pay you to go do something I know is going to fail, because I know that if you fail, that's when you're going to learn something. And, you know, when Paul's wrong, he calls it eating crow. I know Paul's a healthy guy, but I think crow's a pretty big part of Paul's diet now, because we love <laughs> to prove Paul wrong. But you know what? This is the kind of talk that creates a fun culture, where we bet him that we're going to be right, and he's going to be wrong, and he's willing to let us try even though we might fail. Brian wanted to add one other thing. He said that having his improvements uh, re-improved really checked his ego, and that's improved his relationships and his life at home. And because of the culture that he's become part of, now when he goes home and his girlfriend wants him to do something a certain way, instead of being like, no, that's not how I do it, he sees it as, oh, this could be a process improvement. Maybe this will be better. And now they get along better. They have more fun. Jamie is our graphics wizard, and she's worked for FastCap for seven years. And Jamie loves that she has the ability to learn new skills. She's a trained graphic designer, very, very good at it. But at FastCap, she's able to expand her knowledge into other fields and really expand her horizons. Since working at FastCap, She's learned how to make animations. She's learned really cool video editing techniques. I don't know if you guys have seen any of our newest videos, but she's absolutely killing it. And she's running a million dollar printing press, all because of the culture of allowing failure 
and letting people try things and expand the horizon. And this really resonates with me, too. For me, recently, I went to Paul, and I said, Paul, we need to up our technology game. We need a CNC lathe. This manual one's not cutting it, and we can do a lot of stuff on this lathe. He said, OK, go for it. Well, I took a machining class in college. We had one day on the lathe. The entire class sat around the lathe and watched the teacher explain stuff, and we made one part. I knew nothing about a CNC lathe. So I had to go out, and I had to figure out what kind of lathe do we want? What options do we need? Wait, you can have more than three axes? What do they do? Do I need those? Wait, what's a live tool? I, I, I don't know. OK, yeah, that, I, I need that. And then find a lathe, find the right one, find a good deal, figure out where to put it. I got to do all of it, even though I knew nothing, because he was allowing me to expand my horizons. And now we're making parts every day, fully automatically. And actually, the one you see here is the struggle I'm having right now. So if any of you are good machinists, come talk to me later. Could use some advice on this one. But in learning this lathe, I actually made this chess set. Apparently, a chess set is one of the best ways to learn to program a lathe. And it's beautiful. And so I made one, and I put it upstairs at FastCap. And now people go up there on their breaks, and they play chess with each other. And someone still needs to beat me, but it builds a culture. It builds a fun culture. And I got to take one home with me, too. And it's on my coffee table. Now every day when I come into my living room, I look at that, I think, how lucky am I to be part of this culture that allows us to do things like this? So while the purpose of FastCap, we say, is to grow people, do you guys think that I'd be up here confidently speaking to you guys if FastCap hadn't put the time in to develop me and develop my skills, allow me to speak, lead morning meetings, even go speak for Paul sometimes? Absolutely not. And so this is what we do. We grow people. So me, I love working for a lean company because I'm able to dive into the deep, dark waters of everything unknown. And people listen to me, and they say, OK, we'll try that. And so when I say, we need a new air compressor system, we got too many new machines, what we have isn't cutting it. I'm given resources, like Alex Ramirez and Sean Gross, to ask questions to. And I'm allowed to buy a system, go install it myself, even though I know nothing about it, and then watch it work. And even though I'm not told that I should make more money for FastCap, when I go home, I can just flip for joy knowing that I accomplished something that made me the money that I'm making. Christina is our production lead. She's been here for a year and a half. And she loves that we have a respectful environment where people are allowed to improve all of their processes. She said at past jobs, people wouldn't do chores well. And everything was a mess because they hated the way they did it. And so they just wouldn't do it well. But at FastCap, they're allowed to improve absolutely anything, any process that bugs them. So you need to encourage people that it's not, Bob, you build widgets. Tell me how to build widgets better. That's what you're supposed to improve. People can improve anything. FastCap, our bathroom cleaning, we have this beautiful cart. When you walk in, you just want to take this and make the sinks shine. And then everyone that walks in can enjoy using them and go home so happy that they have this place to come back to, this beautiful bathroom, no matter what their house might look like, which some of them, believe me, I'm not sure I want to know what their house might look like. Nikki is our shipping lead, and she actually left her last job managing a coffee stand for 14 years because she heard about our culture and wanted to be part of it. And she just loves that she can actually have input that's listened to. For 14 years, she was frustrated with processes, and people who worked for her were frustrated. And she had to say, I'm sorry, upper management won't let us change it. So Nikki says that you need to help people find ways to enjoy the processes that they find the most tedious. For example, at shipping, you used to, every time you put a label on a box, have to walk it all the way down into that truck, set it down, and come back. So we put in this roller system. Now every time she puts a label on a box, it's almost as fun as basketball. She gets to toss it on the roller and watch it go. That's helping people enjoy tedious processes. Jalen is the last one I talked to, or almost the last one, and he loves that FastCap is so tidy and organized. He said when he walks in the building, he just wants to be there because it almost feels feng shui. And Jalen is just absolutely amazing. He's got the biggest smile on his face and anything anybody needs. 
He's running over there to help him. In the middle of his job, he'll drop all his water spidering and make sure everybody is successful because he just loves being part of a company that looks this neat, clean, tidy, organized. It's somewhere where he wants to spend his day. And lean doesn't just affect the people inside our company. It affects the people we work with, too. Our truck drivers, for example, who are deliver our trucks, they used to have to call us up, get someone on the office on the phone, wait on hold for five minutes. Well, they ran back, found the guy they needed to talk to, got him on the phone. It was frustrating. So we got them on Voxer. Now when they got a truck coming, he just picks up his cell phone, Voxers, and the information goes immediately to everybody who might need to know it. And on top of that, we were actually able to improve it so that we don't have people sitting around waiting for trucks to come when they come in late. Now, when we have a truck coming in late, he voxers us, yeah, it'll be here about seven. We take the bolt cutters, we take them outside, we hide them somewhere, and we voxer them back. All right, the bolt cutters are hidden here. Go ahead, cut it open when you get here, back it up to the door, and we'll unload it first thing in the morning. Now he loves working with us that much more. And then our inventors, this is Paul St. Jacques. He brought us one of our most recent products, the twist lock clip. And when he saw it get launched, he actually had to come to FastCap and see our place because after working with us and developing his product, he felt the energy we had and he wanted to see what was going on. And when he left, he left saying that everyone just felt like a team. Everyone wanted to help each other out because they all wanted the team to succeed. And we just had the most positive team energy he'd ever imagined. Now Colby brought me this one I have to share before I'm done. When I was writing this speech, when you go on Google and you type in any company, like FastCap, Seating Matters, look up the address, there's reviews on it. And this guy is someone who we paid to come do his job, which was to fix our garage door at the end of the day because we couldn't get it to close. Something was wrong with it. And when he left, he actually felt like he needed to go on Google and talk about our culture because it made him feel so great. And just the positive energy and everyone having a great time made the end of his day that amazing. The last one we're going to hear from is Max. Max says that it's better than Match.com. He met his wife here, and he's seen more matches get made at FastCap than anywhere else. Max said, instead of FastCap, maybe we should rename it Fast Match. And instead of lean innovations that change the world, our slogan should be lean culture that creates relationships. All these names you see popping up on the screen, these are all people who have met at FastCap because of our culture and started dating. Max says, if you really want to judge how good your culture is, maybe the best way to judge it is see how many relationships your culture has been able to create. So if you want to go and build an awesome culture like we have at this Lean Summit from where it started in 2015 to 2019 to 2023 and all this awesome energy I've seen from everybody yesterday and beginning of today, I challenge you. Go home, talk to your people, go out on the Gemba, see how they're really feeling, and see what action you can take to make sure your culture is improving, because it's either improving or falling apart. And culture is the most important thing that you need to be improving. Thank you.